Never Dead was one of the lowest rated games to come out in 2012, and one of the last original IPs produced by Konami. It was a game that I remember being excited for after hearing about it at Konami's legendary 2010 press conference. Camera okay? Uh, hello everybody! Uh, it's great for me to be here, see you all, and present our title for you. Hey Tommy! Uh, please introduce yourself. Hi everybody, um, my name is Thomas Nagano and I work with the development team as PR in, from Japan. So as you guys were able to see in the trailer, Bryce, our hero, gets dismembered during gameplay. But it's alright though because he can pick up his body parts and limbs and... Oh. Hey Tommy, are you okay? Oh. Yes. What? what? Who is you? Hey, hey, Tommy! Hey. What are you doing? How can you do this? How can we have a real title? Put it back, 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 put it back. Uh, so sorry. Near the release of the game, I was turned away from Never Dead by the abysmal reviews it was receiving universally across the game's media circuit. The failure of the game to impress reviewers was surprising to me, considering that the director, Shinta Janiri, was well experienced in making excellent games. Janiri worked on some of my favorite games of all time, such as Police Knots and Metal Gear Solid. He was also the director of the highly underrated Metal Gear Acid games on the PSP. Shinada collaborated with UK-based developers Rebellion, who are behind the Sniper Elite games, and most of the Judge Dredd titles. To his credit, Shinata was so intent on doing his best to create Never Dead that he temporarily moved from Japan to Oxford, England to oversee the development. Since we're now living in a post-Konami era, at least for the time being, I wanted to take a look into their legacy of titles and one of their last attempts at creating something new. To be completely honest, I didn't give Never Dead any consideration until a friend picked up the game for me as what I assumed to be a gag gift at the time, and being influenced by the groupthink reviews on the internet, I still didn't bother to learn how the mechanics work, and I put the game down pretty quickly. I mean, why should I have given the game a chance when 1UP said Never Dead exemplifies failure with remarkable success? Or when Owen Good of Kotaku said, It doesn't matter whether this was meant to be serious or for fun and silliness. I'm saying no aspect of this game was enjoyable. It is unfun at any price. Or when Jim Sterling of Destructoid fame labeled the game as An embarrassment fit only for mockery. Two out of 10. A game that earned a 2 out of 10 had to have meant that it was downright broken and unplayable, right? Well, I wanted to see if there was any truth to these criticisms. I wanted to see the game in action for myself, if for nothing else than to have a couple of cheap laughs. Before I begin my review, I created a list of the 10 most common and weirdest complaints a series of reviewers had with the game, and I'm going to address them as I go along. Here are the top 10 Never Dead reviewer complaints in no particular order. Generic shooter mechanics slash repetitive combat. Few enemy types. Clumsy partner AI. Style over substance. Protagonist is too weak. Can be attacked during cutscenes. Penis and anus imagery. Bad writing. New metal music and no multiplayer community. Keep in mind, I played through Never Dead twice on my PlayStation 3 on normal difficulty for the purpose of this review. This is Hikikomori Media in defense of Never Dead. Bad writing. Bad writing is a complaint that is primarily a subjective one, as we all come to the table with different tastes and expectations. The same could be said about bad gameplay, but we'll get to that later. I consider bad writing to be a trait that I don't particularly care about when it comes to a video game. If a game's story is great, then it's icing on the cake, and if it sucks, well then sometimes that's a treat in itself and it's fun picking apart what's bad about it. Take a look at Deadly Premonition, it doesn't have the best writing in the 
world, but what is there is quite entertaining. Ultimately, story does not matter to me, but since we are now in a market where most games can get a pass for story alone, I guess it's worth looking into for posterity. Let's run down Never Dead's story, shall we? Never Dead opens 500 years ago in the past. Here we meet our pretty boy demon slaying protagonist, Bright's Boltzmann, and his wife Cypher as they confront the evil frog demon, Sangria. Ah, I simply adore that shade of salmon pink. Your arrogant words are dripping with pride and overconfidence. It'll lend a tangy touch to your otherwise salty human flesh. You see, we demons can taste the color of the human soul. The introductory cutscene is deceptively gorgeous, and the preceding battle leads the player into some head-scratching questions, like why does Bryce have a machine gun in the medieval era? The intro does set up false expectations for the rest of the game with its medieval setting, but that's an intentional move. We cut to a 500 year flash forward, where we are presented with a much more weathered and worn depiction of Bryce. You see, in the past, Bryce was cursed by the demon lord Astaroth when he shoved a demon eye into Bryce his head, making Bryce immortal. The 500 years haven't been kind to our anti-hero. Now Bryce is spending his eternity in bars and slaying demons with Nada, the national anti-demon agency, to earn a living. The game truly begins after Bryce and his partner Arcadia receive reports that demons were spotted at an old hospital and they're sent out to investigate. The rest of the story flashes back and forth between the 500 year jump and we learn more details about Bryce. Bryce's journey. Is Never Dead's narrative about the journey of an immortal man an original one? No. There have been plenty of stories before it to tackle the concept of immortality. Take a look at the Highlander series. Nine! Erst musst du mich erschießen! <laughs> Whatever you say, Jack. You're the master race. Or Lost Odyssey on the Xbox 360 if you feel like crying your eyes out about how shitty being an immortal person can be. What makes Bryce's story unique is the subversion of expectations in the beginning, in a way standing as a parody of medieval knights in shining armor and how age can change a person. Bryce goes from a gallivant demon slaying husband to an Ash Williams one-liner machine and alcoholic mercenary who is constantly berated by his partner Arcadia. It's about time. There's someone who has the right idea. Unfortunately, we can't make it back to HQ today. We should head back to my safe house until then. Inviting me back to your place, huh? Oh, this is a first. Whoa. I will kill you if you touch any of my stuff. Like this. Oh! Ah! What? I feel as if the bad writing criticism comes from the reviewers disliking the puns and action hero jokes that Bryce shouts in battle. God help them if they ever play Devil May Cry. Instead of tasking its writers with scribbling bad dismemberment and decapitation puns, Rebellion should have hired a writer who can tell a story, of which there is none to speak of here. What the hell's wrong with decapitation puns? Please tell me I'm not the only one who felt the film Austin Powers was snubbed at the 97 Academy Awards. <laughs> Not a good time to lose one's head. While I'll give it to the reviewers that the writing isn't groundbreaking, it still was fairly entertaining and not offensive in any regard. There's no doubt about it, there is definitely a story going on in Never Dead, but it's primarily told through exchanges between Bryce and Arcadia in the heat of battle. Even still, there's at least an hour's worth of cutscenes in the game. Which, knowing Konami games, they're totally showing some restraint here to say the least. As far as exposition is concerned, there's an entire level where all you do is hang out with the crew and talk about the events that have occurred in Arcadia's apartment. I quite like the breaks in action where Bryce and company just chill out in Arcadia's home, even if it's just for him to nab a few panties for comedic relief. What the hell's the purpose of those scenes in Arcadia's apartment? Who the hell cares if I can put my head in a washing machine? Oh, and good. 
Kotaku. Never Dead is primarily a comedy with a few dramatic beats here and there. If you have a functioning sense of humor and aren't going in expecting a Greek epic, then you'll laugh at the absurdity of immortality and enjoy the given story. slash repetitive combat. Many reviewers complain that Never Dead's combat was just another generic third-person shooter that wears on the player quickly with its repetitive nature. I find this accusation couldn't be further from the truth, as Never Dead takes typical shooter mechanics and turns them on their head. Uh, you get it? The core gameplay is centered around slaying demons. Bryce has a few different methods of attack. He has two guns that are tied to each individual arm. He can swap out each weapon on the assigned arm to mix and match for the given situation. Bryce also has the ability to rip off an arm and throw it across the room as bait for enemies, or throw it in enemy stomachs to fire on them from the inside. I love when Bryce loses an arm in the middle of battle, and I like watching it flail across the ground while still firing. I've never seen something like that in a game before. Bryce's other method of defense, and what I feel to be his primary mode of attack, is his Butterfly Blade. Now fans of Metal Gear Rising will feel right at home with this blade, as you can slice and dice your way through enemies and the environment with ease. Some complaints were lodged about the sword's controls where you're required to hold R1 and use the analog stick to swing, and while I agree they are unusual, you will get used to them with some practice, it only took me about 15 minutes to understand it. What sets Never Dead apart from most shooters are the destructible environments developed by Rebellion. You see Bryce can use the environment to his advantage in combat. When you enter a room or level, there are generally pillars, walls, large objects, explosive barrels to destroy or smash. It's essential that you take a look around at your environment and lure your enemies to those areas to trap them under the rubble or explosions. This mechanic can be easily overlooked in the heat of battle. My best advice is to just shoot everything in sight and have fun with it. Bryce can also use his immortal nature to engulf his body in flames or electricity to imbue his weapons with extra damage or to light up the areas. There's also a way Bryce can gain experience and skills. There is a neat leveling system built into the game. On the ground are shiny red shards that Bryce can collect and hidden gold statues in every level that give Bryce additional experience points. Destroying monsters and bosses and collecting these shards will all go towards gaining more experience for Bryce. At the end of a chapter, you can spend these experience points to buy attributes for Bryce. Perhaps you find Bryce's head rolls a little too slowly. Well, there's a perk for that. You get experience boosts, destructible damage upgrades, exploding limbs, the list goes on. The developers specifically recommend going with the slow motion perk that makes the game resemble Max Payne, and it does make it easier to dodge projectiles in the heat of battle. I'd also recommend it. Keep in mind that each perk takes up a certain number of slots, so you can't equip everything until you have the required space for it. You can buy additional slots as the game progresses. Change up your perks to adjust to your own playstyle. I tended to go with more sword upgrades myself. It's good to note that experience and perks carry over to every new game, even if you haven't finished the game. So if you're having trouble getting past a part, just farm the first couple of levels for experience and then just restart with all the perks that you want. There are over 50 unique perks to unlock during the game, and it truly does change up strategies you will use. Protagonist is too weak. This criticism confounded me the most, as Bryce isn't weak at all. He's far from it due to his immortality. 
Thinking as a developer, the biggest challenge that I could see making a game about an immortal protagonist is creating some sort of fail state for Bryce to enter. I assume the weakness complaint originates from how Bryce can be torn limb from limb. As Bryce takes damage from enemies, he will lose one or all of his limbs. This typically doesn't bother Bryce as he's so determined to battle, he'll often end up hopping around on one leg or ripping off his arm and throwing it to distract enemies. I absolutely love love this mechanic and it sets Never Dead apart from everything else. The losing limbs mechanic makes the player pay attention to the protagonist's well-being in a different manner. You have to look to ensure all of Bryce's limbs are attached and recover the limbs when they're missing. You have a couple of options to get your limbs back here. The usual method is finding out where the limbs flew off to and dodge rolling over them to reattach them to Bryce. You can also wait a little bit for them to grow back on their own or dip into your regeneration circle to regrow them on the fly. If you're a little low on your regen ability, you can pick up a potion that will refill your circle. Keep in mind, if Bryce loses both arms or legs, he cannot swing his sword. So I recommend just dodge rolling over your limbs when you lose them and keep on fighting. If you've taken too much damage or an enemy executes a special attack, Bryce can become decapitated. When Bryce becomes decapitated, this is when he becomes vulnerable. It's the only way the player can enter a fail state. There are enemies that wander the field looking to inhale Bryce's various limbs. Bryce's objective when decapitated is getting his head back to his shoulders, so he can reattach it before his head gets inhaled by one of these enemies. If you get swallowed by an enemy, then you have to perform the only QTE in, the, in game. the game. All you gotta do is press X once to stop the arrow in the vomit zone. When successfully landed, an enemy will barf up Bryce's head. If unsuccessful, well, Bryce will spend an eternity being slowly digested by the demon, which means game over for the player. Even if you aren't a fan of Never Dead, give credit where it's due. For a modern third-person shooter, avoiding QTEs to solve its design problems is next to unheard of nowadays. One problem players might have is with the head rolling mechanic being somewhat random, as Bryce's head's gonna fly all over the place sometimes. Sometimes it'll land right next to his body, and sometimes it will fly halfway across the map. You can adjust the speed of your head rolls or jumps depending on what skill you have equipped. So getting back to your body can be a challenge if you're not equipped for the task. In fairness, I did have a couple of issues in the game where debris covered Bryce's head and I had to hop my way out of the situation. But it never got to the point where I had to reboot the game. If I ever felt like I couldn't get back to Bryce's body in time, I would just hit the regenerate limbs button and carry on with the slaying. I can understand why reviewers didn't like the limb dropping mechanic as it can bring battles to a halt to hop back onto Bryce's shoulders. But after playing the game for a bit, I grew to understand this mechanic and I anticipated it and didn't minded over time and found the challenge to be quite unique. Having a weak protagonist does not make Never Dead a poorly designed game. If one of the gripes about Never Dead is being a clone of a third person shooter, which it's not, then let's examine what the typical protagonist in a modern third person shooter is like. In a modern third person shooter, you're typically a badass action star with an unlimited arsenal and a world of chest high walls. Whenever the chips are down, this protagonist can QTE their way out of any situation, including punching boulders in a volcano, and when they're taking too much damage, they can just chill out for a minute and have their life regen on its own. Modern players have become conditioned to accept this self-regenerating action hero as the standard by which games should follow. So when a game like Never Dead tries something new by taking the power away from the player and forces the player to reevaluate their strategies from the games they're used to, in which they could just run out in the open, take a hail of bullets and then regen behind a cover wall, reviewers want to cry foul on the game design. Since when did having a weak protagonist become bad game design? The survival horror genre is filled with them. Would Silent Hill 2 be as terrifying and engaging if James Sunderland was a roided out no neck with unlimited health? No. Taking the power away from the protagonist adds to the challenge and balances the game design. 
Nowadays, people love games with weaker protagonists. Just take a look at how much Dark Souls makes its way around the circle jerk for being innovative with the degree of challenge presented by taking away the power from the player. The NES library was filled with games that would implement one hit in your dead gameplay. All these points are moot when you consider that Never Dead is not that difficult at all. As mentioned, Bryce can regrow his limbs at will or find his way back to his body. But if you suck enough at Never Dead, you can always crank down the difficulty to easy mode until you get better. Not to mention that as you progress through the game, Bryce will get additional abilities that will make him more powerful. To play Devil's Advocate, Never Dead has a bit of a learning curve, but it's not that steep once you get the hang of how the world works. If your head gets vacuumed up by an enemy, you have an unlimited amount of time to focus on centering the arrow in the vomit zone, so the game provides a second chance. If you fail, then you don't have much to worry about either because the game has frequent checkpoints and it reloads the level instantly after death. The real question I have for the reviewers is how much handholding do you want out of your games? A shitty game is a shitty game. My skill at playing it has nothing to do with it. Why don't you play it if the concept is so intriguing and get back to me? Ellen Good. Get back up.